if I'm now, let's say I'm facing uh, cancer and I'm learning that if I can stay 100% raw, I can do dehydrated um, vegetables and I can make uh, crackers and even a uh, veggie burger in there out of sprouted grains and sprouted uh, beans. And I realized that this is what I need to do for some time. Then, then if I get educated enough, I probably will do that. But then when I'm done with that, let's say um, two years later, this is what we all find, Gabriel, Brian and I, and anybody that's working with, the, with uh, living food, that um, it takes at least two years of um, stricter living, then we can go over to 80% raw and 20% cooked. So here comes the bean soups, the sprouted beans. I make bean soups. I use root vegetables. You know, you have taste buds. And they're going to cause trouble in the beginning. <laughs> 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 and, you know, what our guests, the first week, they think the food is bland. And the third week, they tell our chefs, why didn't you serve this food that first week? I would have loved it. <laughs> it's the same food. It's same same food. food. So we change. And, you know, plus you have taste receptors throughout your whole body. And there is uh, 25 different ones for bitter. And there is one each for sweet, savory, salty. And they, they, they actually make um, nitric nitric oxide for you to be a part of your immune system. So you were used to sweet, savory, salty, and sour. Yes, you were used to that. So then we kind of have to find that in, in, the, in the living food world, the, the plant food world. That's, it's different because now we don't use salt. We don't have black pepper, white pepper. We have, we have hot peppers. We have cayenne peppers. We have uh, sodium in the um, juice from, from uh, celery, and we use some uh, nama shoyu uh, in our condiment table for people or brags that they can add, because your taste buds will have to get used to the difference. But the, the world kind of is really big. Everything that we ate cooked before, we can eat raw. We eat raw asparagus, raw corn, raw cabbage, we eat raw um, uh, squash, you know, raw sweet potato. We make dishes out of that. So the, the world kind of opens up. And of course, sprouted beans, we, that's a part of the things that we use every day and that you can make dishes out of. And then eventually, you go over to 80% raw, 20% cooked. Mm. And I love the dehydrator because so many things that I can make in there, like crackers. I can take, for example, zucchini and cut it thin slices, put it in a bowl. I can uh, put a little bit of Bragg's or Namasoyu water and lots of hot spices and garlic, which I love, and then let it soak a little bit, and then I dehydrate them in a temperature that, that um, Dr. Howell found that at Above 115, you kill enzymes. So if you can keep your dehydrator very low, that's like you 44. Cook on the stove below 115. Yeah, you can cook on the stove below 150. If you, as long as you can have your pinky in the water. A food thermometer. <laughs> that's your, well, that's the best food for thermometer because if it's too hot, you can't keep your finger in there. So, you know, you have a lot of tools that you can use. And we use, of course, uh, soups. We use the blender. We don't use the blender for juice. We use a, a um, juice machine for that, like a wheatgrass juicer. But I can use the blender for to making soups, put avocado and vegetables, and um, spice it up, and um, squash, sweet potato, you know, to, to make different flavors. So we teach that at the Institute. Of course, it's something. If you don't, if you've never seen it, you really need to take classes, or you find classes here with people that are teaching. So, um, you know, so let's let your taste buds be used to different flavors. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to try not to be academic or. Um, 
were confusing. I mean, I, I saw the enthusiasm when you thought, gee, these guys are going to tell me exactly what to do. <laughs> so I'm going to do the best I can. And, but everything these wonderful people told you is true. That we are individual, we have different tastes, different habits, uh, different history. So that's an account. What we do know, uh, if you look at the work of Dr. Longo, University of Southern California, the work we've done at Hippocrates, uh, the general rule is don't eat anything or a lot in the morning. Eat a lot in the middle of the day and very little at night, if anything. So Anna Marie and I are down five days a week to one meal a day. Am I saying you should do that? No. I used to eat like an animal when I started to eat raw food. I wasn't emotionally ready to give up everything, you know, so I was trying to get the substitute of the veggie burger and the macrobiotic diet that was like 10 pounds of grain every time I ate it. So that transition you have to take into consideration and there's not you're a good boy or a good girl, you're doing the best you can on this stuff. Uh, what we would tell you to eat at Hippocrates, since I say the heavy meals in the middle of the day, and what we know from 11.30 in the morning to 1.30 in the afternoon, hydrochloric acid is most active. So the body's uh, chemistry is actually saying to you, put protein in at this point. So the best time to eat proteins, the nut loaves, the seed sauces, the croquettes, the burgers you're making out of nuts or seeds or gathering of nuts and seeds, hopefully always germinate it first to make them digestible. Remember the proteins are broken into amino acid, carbohydrates to simple sugars and fats to essential fats, easier essential fats. And that's when you eat heavy stuff. And then at night, uh, try to eat between 11 and 6. You know, in the middle of summer, it could be 11 and 7, 11 and 7.30, because the way our bodies uh, were designed is through the habits we had. Remember, pe people were nomads. They went to sleep when the sun went down, and they got up when the sun came up. And then people were farmers, and they went to sleep when the sun went down, and they got up when the... And then all at once, the Industrial Revolution came, and they invented this damn thing called lights. And now they have round-the-clock factories, and we're watching television, the late-night shows at 12.30 at night, and the body's going completely out of its mind. So what we do know is we're still that creature that wants to eat heavy in the middle of the day, very little at night, and the longevity factors from Longo's research is phenomenal. They don't even change diets. They tell people, keep eating your junk food diet, just eat at these times, and there is shocking, overwhelming, clear evidence that that makes them healthier. Now, can you imagine when we start to eat healthy food and do it within this range? And, you know, I was guilty when I first became a vegan of eating until the minute I went to bed because I was filling up the emotional void I had. You know, I would go to bed and, you know, when, thank God I didn't discover banana ice cream that you make out of frozen bananas. I would have probably died from an overdose. <laughs> of that. So, so I think to answer your best you can, heavy in the middle of the day, nuts, seeds, grains, beans. By the way, today we had cooked sweet potatoes at lunch and we had all the rest was raw. We drank very large 22 ounce green juices uh, lacking the sprouts that we put in. At Hippocrates, half of them are sprouts. One green drink, that's 12 ounces, has the protein the average person absorbs in three days. So what that does to regulate blood sugar is like stunning. We take a glucometer before and after, you go, you freak out. You can't believe it's the same person. So that's the general rule. It's about when you eat and eating those foods and lighter at night and little if nothing at, in the morning.